The Alumni Hall of Fame is sponsored by the SF State Alumni Association. The Hall of Fame was created to honor those outstanding alumni who are acknowledged contributors in the wider community for professional, cultural, and civic achievements and who bring great credit to their alma mater. And whether they like it or not, their photographs are prominently displayed on campus in the busy first floor lobby of the administration building. <laughs> the, um, yeah. The accomplishments of those be being honored tonight serve as a reminder to our students and to all of us that through a combination of skill, determination, hard work, and sometimes with more than a bit of bravado and luck, one can rise to the top of the profession and perhaps achieve more than they, that they themselves had once ever dreamt possible. We are here tonight to share our pride in who we are and what we have become by acknowledging these outstanding alumni and their achievements. Also, Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi has asked that each inductee receive her certificate of special congressional recognition, and so they will. The new members we induct tonight are Bernard Bragg, Lisa Cholodenko, Judith Marcus, and Al Martinez. Each in their own way and through their achievements represents the best of San Francisco State. A deaf theater artist Bernard Bragg is credited as one of the first people to popularize mime in the United States. As the deaf son of deaf parents, Bernard spent his youth working to communicate with others and developed an interest in theater. He studied theater at Goladet University in Washington, D.C. and spent 15 years as a teacher at the California School for the Deaf in Berkeley. During that time, he earned a master's in special education at SF State and graduated in 1959. After studying, French, studying under French mime artist Marcel Marceau in Paris, Bernard returned to the United States and became a prominent mime artist, performing across the country and starring in his own television show, The Quiet Man, on KQED. He later co-founded the National Theater of the Deaf, whose national and international tours have helped change public perceptions of people who are deaf. Bernard's international influence as an artist, director, and playwright includes working with deaf theater companies in Russia, Germany, and Hong Kong, and lecturing across the world as part of a tour with the International Theater Institute of the United States. He is the recipient of a special Tony Award, an honorary doctorate from the Gallaudet University and a Special Lifetime Achievement Award from the World Federation of the Deaf. It is our great honor and pleasure to formally induct and welcome Bernard Bragg, Department of Special Education to the San Francisco State University Alumni Hall of Fame. tough to see from here. Thank you. Thank you, President Wong. And I have to admit to being speechless this evening. <laughs> Maybe that's appropriate for a mime. Looking at the captions that we have here this evening, it's a wonderful benefit for those of you who don't know sign language. 
you can also hear the interpreter speaking what I'm signing to you. <laughs> so we have the, the triple threat this evening of captions, sign language, and spoken English. It's wonderful to have these options. You can choose one or look at all three at once. You know, I feel like I want to just tear up my prepared comments and give you a mime performance this evening, but unfortunately... <laughs> do you mean it? <laughs> but what about my prepared comments? I, did I write them for nothing? <laughs> Sign language has come a very long way since our, let's call it, prehistoric times. Can you imagine how prehistoric communication was? Something like this. You know, I didn't plan to do that this evening. <laughs> but sign language has come an awfully long way. Sign language can convey Shakespeare. Do you know the word, Matt? Let's see if the interpreter knows the words. I'll just do a few lines. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. Each man plays his part. You know, I can't even go on. I don't know if I remember all of it. I, to, I better go back to my prepared remarks and play it safe here. I am very honored to be here this evening. And look, look at the papers flying. I should have left them alone. Oh, and now what? The world's falling apart here. Can you... I am very honored to be here with you this evening. To be part of the San Francisco State University Hall of Fame is truly a humbling experience. I was a school teacher when I enrolled in San Francisco State to pursue my educational career and to pursue my credentials. I never expected where it would lead me, that, would it take me, that it would take me on the journey that I have had all over this world. I would never have expected the impact it would allow me to have on the deaf community and the attitudes that people have toward deaf people. While I was studying at San Francisco State, world-renowned French mime artist Marcel Marceau performed at the Geary Theater here in San Francisco, just a few blocks away from where we are right now. I was able to meet him And once again, I had no inkling that that would be a turning point that would lead me to studying under him and to then become an actor, director, and playwright myself. Having a hard time seeing up here. <laughs> Light's important to deaf people. <laughs> You can just read it yourselves. <laughs> or I could sign. Or I could sign from the captions, but then they're waiting for me, so that doesn't work. <laughs> hey, as long as I'm getting laughs, I guess I'm doing a good job. <laughs> oh good. Where was I?
I was talking about attitudes toward deaf people and how they've been slowly changing in the world. And part of that can be attributed to the establishment of the National Theater of the Deaf, which I co-founded with David Hayes. Thank you. The National Theater of the Deaf also led to the development of other theater companies. The Deaf West Theater, which you may have heard of, mounted a very well-received production of Big River that was brought to Broadway, not once, but twice. And also received a special Tony Award, which it is not on my comments. I'm, I'm going off, off script a bit here. And I think I've gone beyond my two or three minutes that I was told to keep my comments to. So let's get back on script if we can. <laughs> the various theater companies that have grown after the founding of the National Theater of the Deaf have played a very important role in removing the stigma widely associated with deafness and sign language. The creative work of deaf artists and actors has attracted the attention of the public as well as of our government, which has led to the development of a better image of deaf people. I think I'm almost done, so bear with me. In the past half century, I've traveled and worked across North America as well as abroad, in Europe, the Far East, and Australia, as a lecturer, performer, advisor, and director, as well as a goodwill ambassador. What I learned studying education at San Francisco State, I applied to my work in the theater. There were several, <clears throat> excuse me, several faculty members, faculty members at San Francisco State who greatly influenced my life and my career, especially Dr. Priscilla Pittinger, who was the uh, who was in the special education department. Some of you are applauding here. Do you know who she was? I thought I was the only one alive still who knew who she was. Dr. Pittenger was just outstanding. She was also the advisor on my thesis, which was entitled, The Intellectual Achievements of Deaf People in the United States. So many deaf people in so many fields of endeavor have then continued their work beyond what I studied even then. Many deaf theater groups which I had visited or worked with have blossomed. Advancing the human rights of deaf people in their respective countries. And in closing, may San Francisco State University continue to inspire others as it did me. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, that's yours. Okay. All right. Lisa Chalodenko. Her 2010 comedy drama, The Kids Are All Right, earned. Yeah. yeah. That wonderful film earned four Oscar nominations and won a Golden Globe for Best Motion Picture.
Lisa, the writer-director, graduated from SF State in 1987 with a bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies. Lisa earned an MFA from Columbia University's film school and soon made her mark on the indie film scene. Lisa wrote and directed several acclaimed short films before embarking on her debut feature, High Art, a relationship drama which won the Sundance Film Festival's Waddle Salt Screenwriting Award. That was a nice little film, too, with Ali Sheed and uh, Arada Mitchell. She has also worked on, yeah, she has also worked on television series, including HBO's Six Feet Under. and is a member of the Board of Governors of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. It is now our great honor and pleasure to formally induct and welcome Lisa Cholodenko, <laughs> Interdisciplinary Studies, San Francisco State University Alumni Hall of Fame. Where's my teleprompter? <laughs> I guess there's no teleprompter. Anyway, uh, good evening, and thank you for this wonderful honor. Uh, I have to tell you that when they called me to tell me that I was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, um, I was, of course, flattered, and I was a little bit amazed, because um, I've always felt like these kinds of honors were reserved for people with a massive list of accomplishments and cures and breakthroughs and discoveries and, you know, people on the other side of their career trajectories and, um, <laughs> you know, retiring their number and kind of winding down, so to speak. So. Just to be clear, and for the record, I, I have to tell you that um, I've only made four films and uh, know deeply that I'm still a freshman in my, um, in my field. So anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about me and my experience with San Francisco State, at San Francisco State. Um, at 18, I was, I was a kid who wanted to get away from the sweaty suburbs of Los Angeles. Um, I wanted to get away as fast, and I wanted to get away as far as possible. And I was ready to discover who I was and what I'd become, what I would become. And so I jumped at the opportunity to move up to the Bay Area and uh, start my education at San Francisco State. And my experiences at the university and, and in the city absolutely shaped me. It gave me the foundation for um, all my future aspirations. To be honest, I wasn't the best student in high school. I was more of a strum and drang kind of teenager. So when I arrived at San Francisco State, um, I had kind of a change of heart, and I realized how much I really wanted to turn that around and change that. And I wanted to reach my learning potential, and I, I genuinely wanted to learn. Um, I didn't get off to a good start. I got off to kind of a bad start by getting a C in a class I was taking with Angela Davis. <laughs> but with my new resolve to be a better student, I decided I was going to step up and face this uh, lousy mark head on. I decided to go to Angela's office hour and convince her to change my grade. So anticipating this meeting gave me extreme anxiety. If any of you know Angela Davis, Angela Davis is not somebody to take casually. <laughs> not only was she a communist, intellectual, feminist, and former Black Panther, <laughs> but at the time she also smoked a pipe. For me, she was as fearsome as they get, and I absolutely and equivocally was intimidated by her. But all that changed when I went to her office hour. Angela D. turned out to be kind, generous, thoughtful, and deeply invested in teaching young students like me. In that one meeting, she taught me how to write a coherent term paper from beginning to end, and it's true. In 30 minutes, I learned more about writing than I had in four years of high school English in a, in a public school. <laughs> 
A few years later, I became Angela Davis's TA, which is kind of funny if you think about it. <laughs> Anyhow, my interest in film came soon after Angela. That's when I met uh, Tina, an eccentric girl studying film in the, in the film studies department at State. Tina loved cinema verite, film noir, the, the Nouvelle Vague, and she ran around San Francisco with her movie camera making Fellini and Godard knockoffs. <laughs> Though Tina marched to her own drummer, her passion for film was infectious, and through her I developed a love of movies and the vague notion that I could make movies myself. So I went on to get a social science degree, but somewhere in those undergraduate years, I realized that I didn't have to be practical in my choice of profession. Filmmaking is not a secure, uh, a secure career choice. In fact, it's a veritable crapshoot. <laughs> but at San Francisco State, I learned that passion might get me further than practical pursuits. I also learned that filmmaking and social science are kind of related. Or at least that's what I told my parents when they um, <laughs> admonished me that my career choice was insane. In the end, it all worked out because after I graduated from state, I landed in the film program at Columbia University and before I'd graduated, I'd actually made my first feature film. So there you have a brief history of how San Francisco State brought me out of the stifling suburbs into the world of eclecticism and diversity and delivered me into the world of film. Uh, there are many other people and professors that were part of my San Francisco State experience, people who taught me well and helped push me along life's path. But as I thought back, um, these were the encounters that stood out most. All this was a long time ago but these experiences were seminal for me and they remain monuments to my, um, my emerging identity at a time when I was pliable and impressionable and very hungry to learn. So again, thank you for this beautiful honor. I'm proud to be part of the history of San Francisco State University and I'm grateful for the eclectic transformational education it provided me, so thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Congratulations, and welcome to the Hall of Fame. Uh, by the way, uh, the kids are all right. Uh, Co-starred an SF State alum, Annette Benning. I want to thank Lee Blitch for reminding me of that fact, although he called her Annette Bining for some, <laughs> some odd reason. I don't know what that's all about. <clears throat> You had to have been at a previous Hall of Fame induction. Oh, yeah. The very hip Mr. Blitch introduced me as having interviewed, among many others, Bob Dylan. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Hey, uh, next up, Bay Area community leader Judith Marquez has been a creative force in nonprofit leadership for the past 30 years. She served as president of the board of the Community Services Agency, CSA, Families in Transition, and Breast Cancer Connections. And she has been an active leader with the Peninsula Humane Society, Montalvo Arts Center, and Avenida's Senior Center. Judith's innovative participation, such as founding CSA's Hometown Heroes event and helping launch the Humane Society's first furball fundraiser, has helped bring in new levels of funding to grassroots organizations. She currently serves on the SF State Foundation's Board of Directors. Judith graduated from the university with a bachelor's degree in physical education in 1962 and taught for seven years before starting a family. Together with her husband, George Marcus, SF State Class of 1965, she has established the SF State International Center for the Arts, supported scholarships, 
and endowed the Robert A. Corrigan Chair in American Studies. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our great honor and pleasure to formally induct and welcome Judith Marcus, Department of Kinesiology and Physical Education to the San Francisco State University Alumni Hall of Fame. Wow, what a group to follow. Put my glasses on. Thank you for this wonderful honor. As I look back to my days at San Francisco State, as it used to be called, I remembered how excited I was to be going there. I was a typical commuting student who was going to school and working at the same time. It was an interesting time to be a student in the early 60s. It was a time of change. President Kennedy was promoting physical fitness for all of our youth in the country from elementary to high school. As a PE teacher, my skills were needed. I was able to graduate in four years and I began my teaching career with an internship right after college. SF State had provide, prepared me with all the tools I needed to be successful. I would like to thank all of the faculty who made this possible. After teaching for seven years, I started a family and began my work with nonprofits in our community. I learned so much from all of the different organizations I was involved with. I like to be hands-on in the community as well as serving on the board. One of my fondest memories was with a group in East Palo Alto called Families in Transition. We worked with new Latino immigrant families. We started a house cleaning co-op with the women. Some learned to drive, some cleaned, and others would take care of the children. We spent time giving them the tools that would be ne necessary to run a successful business. After a few months, we had many clients. Profits were divided equally every two weeks. For most of the women, this was the first time they ever had their own income. It was very empowering. We all know that when you give back, it helps others to move forward. At this time, I would like to my, thank my family, sitting over here, and, and my friends, for all your support and supporting me in these organizations. In conclusion, I would just like to say that I never thought I would come back to this university to receive such a wonderful recognition. I am currently on the San Francisco State Foundation Board, and I hope to continue to make a difference for the university. Go Gators. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judy, and thanks to George, too. Great part of the university family. This evening, Al Martinez is not able to join us. He had some health challenges this week, but he reports that he is doing well, but under doctor's orders not to travel. We wish Al the best, and we will honor and celebrate his accomplishments this evening. In his six decades long career as a journalist and author, Al Martinez earned a reputation for a writing style that combines humor and poignancy to highlight social justice issues. As a longtime reporter and columnist for the Los Angeles Times, Al shared in three Pulitzer Prizes for coverage of the 1993 LA riots, the 1994 Northridge earthquake, and a series on the city's Latino community. He got his start in journalism in 1947 when he enrolled at SF State and wrote for the student newspaper. Al's time at the university, or college back then, was cut short when in 1950 he was drafted by the Marines to serve in the Korean War. After the war, Al returned to the Bay Area and wrote for the Oakland Tribune. As a kid in Oakland, I was one of his many readers and admirers. Al has published numerous books and written for television. Last year, his career was the focus of a Huntington Library exhibition titled, Al Martinez, Bard of L.A. Al continues to write for the Los Angeles Daily News and Topanga Messenger, 
and leads the Topanga Writers' Workshop. It is now our great honor and pleasure to formally induct and welcome Al Martinez, Social Science and Journalism, to the San Francisco State University Alumni Hall of Fame. Al wrote and sent along, uh, Mr. President, uh, these remarks. Um, how honored, do you want to read his remarks and then take his reward for him? No, oh, okay, all right, all right. How honored, uh, Al wrote and sent these remarks. How honored I feel to be inducted into the San Francisco State University Hall of Fame, and how sad I am not to be here to accept that honor in person. I had so looked forward to visiting the new campus I had never seen, knew anyhow in the late 40s and early 50s, when we were attending classes in a series of metal Quonset huts and makeshift buildings at the junction of Haight and Buchanan streets. And I was looking forward to perhaps reestablishing friendships that might have weathered the half century that has passed since we worried about midterms and finals and the world that would be waiting when we left the embrace of academia. But heart problems have forbidden that I join these festivities where my career goals were refined under the tutelage of working journalists, men and women who taught rules of honesty and accuracy and the power of information in a free and democratic society. Making the trip from LA would just be too hard on my 84-year-old body. But I wanted you to know that I have worked hard as a reporter and columnist over a long career to honor the lessons my tutors offered and am grateful for the opportunity tonight to be recognized for having done so. Thank you, San Francisco State University, for having made a lifetime for me. Thank you for the tools and for the encouragement that have made my dreams come true. I accept your recognition of my work with gratitude and humility, Al Martinez.